In this video, we're going to take a look at a couple of different approaches you can take to creating a WordPress theme, child theming and standalone theming. So first we'll look at child theming. Creating a child theme means that you take an existing theme and you make your own theme that's based on it, inheriting most of the features from the original. This saves a lot of work. By creating a child theme, you're leveraging the work that somebody else has already put in, or in some cases, a lot of people have put in, to make a theme great. And if you find a theme that really works for you, you might not need to do much of anything. Child theming is great no matter how many modifications to the original theme you want to make. If you want to make at least one change, you should make a child theme and work from there. That way you can keep up with upgrades on the original theme. This is important because you always want your WordPress to stay up to date. And different updates to WordPress along with the very important security updates will include new features. And a lot of them might impact a theme. So if you choose a base theme that's keeping up to date with the latest features in the latest releases of WordPress, your child theme will be updated on all the components that you yourself didn't touch. And that's really handy. Now there are some drawbacks to working in the child theme mode. First, you have to go through the effort of choosing a suitable parent theme. There are quite a few good ones out there, but for your requirements, it may be difficult to find one that suits you. Another potential problem is if the parent theme acts a lot like a plugin and includes a lot of features that maybe you don't want. Stripping those features out could be a little bit difficult, and you might think it's more trouble than it's worth. This, in my experience, happens more with commercial themes than themes that you might find through the WordPress theme repository or in other places where the themes are specifically designed to be used as parent themes for child themes. But it still can come up. And just in general, when you're building a child theme, you do lose a certain degree of overall control. The fact that you get a lot of features from your parent theme is great, but if you want total control over every last detail, child theming might not be for you. The other approach is to make a standalone theme. This is great if you want your markup and your design to be just so. Say you're starting with a pre-designed HTML mockup and you want everything to work exactly as it is in that mockup. If you've pushed every pixel into just the right place, designed all your responsive behaviors, and everything is exactly the way you need it to work, then creating a standalone theme might be just what the doctor ordered. When you work on a standalone theme, you'd never have to worry about unexpected changes coming from your parent theme. It's conceivable that an upgraded parent theme, along with covering the latest features of WordPress, could impact a child theme in some way that you didn't expect or might not like. If you make your own theme, and it's a totally standalone deal, you never have to worry about that. One disadvantage is that you don't necessarily get any help getting started. This is especially true if everything needs to be exactly just so. There are some themes out there that are meant to be used in a standalone way, but still as a starter theme. Not as a parent theme for a child, but as a theme that you would take and modify directly. So sometimes you can get some help getting started, but if you're creating it from scratch, you don't have a lot of help from anybody else, and sometimes that can be a problem. A potentially bigger problem is keeping up to date with all the latest features of WordPress. WordPress upgrade cycles are relatively short, and there's frequent security updates that you really need to keep up with. Most of those aren't going to impact your theme on any kind of major level, but if you've created the theme yourself, that's something that you're still going to have to keep up with more than you might have to do in a child theming context. So my recommendation is that if possible, you should create a child theme. I find the benefits of working in a child theming context to generally outweigh the drawbacks. So we're going to talk about child theming a lot in this course. It's a great way, especially if you use a default WordPress theme, to keep up to date with the latest features, latest security updates, and only do the minimum amount of work. And of course, creating a child theme is really easy, and it's a good thing to do even if you're not going to modify the original theme very much. But if creating a child theme is not for you, make your own and be not afraid. Creating a theme from scratch, a standalone theme, is not terribly difficult. And if that's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. And we're going to support you in that as well. So that's a look at the two main approaches to WordPress theming, child theming and a standalone theme from scratch.